If you are a parent, a partner, a writer, speaker, entrepreneur, you have a nine to five, basically if you are in today's society, you have a lot on your plate and often run yourself ragged because you have this high expectation that you need to be superhuman and perfect all of the time. Kaylee and Dorch Elliott is right there with you and she shares in this expert interview how to manage and juggle it all with grace. Kaylee's business, By Grace Not Perfection, helps business owners with their web design and branding with an emphasis on being human. Stick around till the end because Kay- Kayleon shares so many juicy tips and inspiration around being multi-passionate, struggling with perfectionism, and so much more. I hope you enjoy. Welcome to the show, Kayleon. I'm so excited to have you today. I just want the audience to know you and get to know all of the wisdom that you have to share with us today. So if you could, please share with us your story, how where you got to where you are today and you know your business and all about you. Yeah. So first of all, thank you for having me. I'm excited to be on and if I can be honest, I was really excited about not having to like be extravagant in terms of preparation and dress and all of that. I love the, the, the down home feel to, to your channel. Um, so thank you for having me first of all. Um, so basically everything that I'm doing started out as a blog that I started in middle school. Um, and it was just to motivate and encourage people. And I just kind of kept at it through high school. And eventually, once I got to college, I changed the name of my blog to By Grace Not Perfection. So at the time, which my whole life, I had been a perfectionist and just go, 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 go achievement. And um, just a lot of the relationships that I had, like with people, um, like friendships and different stuff like that, were built off of my achievements. And so that was just kind of ingrained in my head. And I was really learning about just the practical side of gracing yourself and giving yourself um, space and time to be yourself and not to strive for this person that has everything together all the time and is always in the mood for things and is always productive. Um, So I kind of took a shift with my blog. After a while, I created different products to try to promote that message of grace over perfection. Um, And then it turned into like, it do offer like consultations and different strategy sessions um, on top of like design. And I have a lot of things going on, um, which is why I'm like constantly in need of a reminder of not only is what my business is called like my husband tells me all the time like what's the name of your business and I'm like I don't want to hear that right now <laughs> like, oh, I'm yeah. trying to be productive <laughs> um so everything that I'm doing stemmed from that that blog and now it's become like a platform for me to help other people and just kind of guide them through this hectic world that tells you hustle and um just run yourself racket just for the sake of being effective and having nice content and and doing all of these things so i do focus on like the branding aspect of things but also focusing on the person because you can have this great brand but if the person behind it is not okay then we're back at the drawing board so i value the person and and the brand and the world will still spin your brand will still be there it's important that you that you are effective um, because that's what matters at the end of the day. And people are visiting websites and being um, like encountering your brand, but at the end of the day, they are encountering you. Um, And so you, I believe that the brand is a reflection of who you are um, by then vice versa. Yeah, for sure. I love that point of view when it comes to branding and and all of that and Mm -hmm. your website. Cause like, I don't think that a lot of people talk about that often. And um, Mm -hmm. I can see like how your personal experience comes into play when it, when it comes to that. So um, yeah, for sure. (laughs) It's great. Um, So when it comes to managing your time and being effective in your own business and your own life, being a mom, being a wife, um what what do you do what like how do you stay in grace and and not in perfection mode it's like in and out of grace like all the time I really think is it's going to be forever a learning process and I've also found that different strategies work for different things 
like I may, um, I know most recently I've been a Google Calendar like person. Um, and I love like being able to change the colors for different tasks. That way I know like, okay, I have quite a bit of business things today. This is more personal. Like I, I can categorize that. So that has been a lifesaver. Um, so I, for a while I was with the, uh, the paper planner. I still use my paper planner along with Google Calendar um, and in the planner. I don't remember which brand it is, but it has a morning reflection and then end of day reflection. And that's something that I didn't realize that I needed because I'm like, go, 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 go. And like, I just kind of move on to the next day and don't really take time to reflect. And I think that's, that's one thing that's very important with the topic that we're talking about busy versus being effective. Um, because if you never take the time to process, okay, this is what I did today. This is probably something that I could have done better and not necessarily beating yourself up about it, but actually acknowledging like, okay, well, maybe I spent a little too much time on social media. Maybe I took a break during my work schedule to do laundry, like when I could have just de still dedicated that time to work and laundry can wait. Um so having the, the morning um, reflection and then just the end of day reflection is so important um, for me to realize, okay, how was I effective today? And how was I just kind of doing stuff like that is things that I need to do, but maybe it could have waited until a, a later date. But maybe I felt like the more that I do, the more at the end of the day, it'll look like, yeah, I was, I was productive. Um, so even if you don't have a planner that has that, I would encourage you to set aside time. It can be a few minutes, um, whatever you need to just kind of process and reflect on your work day. And yeah. when you're working from home, it's like 10 times <laughs> more important um, because you can easily get distracted by different tasks. And um, so that's something that, that I've been doing. But then also I have been making space for my family and taking naps like there are times when I feel like I can't keep my eyes open like I'm just so sleepy but my work day technically still isn't over because I had um I said uh, once you know we we've been working from home and different things I had like set work hours um that I would do every day and um I wasn't making space for taking naps like and just really listening to my body and I think that's that's another thing that's important because you do want to be productive and set those work hours but then you also want to give space for your yourself to be human like sometimes you're tired sometimes the day before was just a lot and you just need to rest and so this the, for the past two weeks but I know I think it was <laughs> the week before last um my body was just really telling me to rest. Like I, I was having headaches, which I haven't had in a long time. Um, I was just really tired. Like I, I just wanted to nap all the time. Um, and it was beyond just, you just want to relax. Like my body was tired and I ended up having to reschedule this, this interview, um, and a few other things as well, which was hard for me because I would typically feel like I failed or, I should have been able, maybe I should have known this when I scheduled it, but you can't go off of that. And so that's where, you know, grace comes in and just giving yourself that space because things will come up, but it's, it's about your health. Like I wouldn't be able, I wouldn't have been on this interview being able to interact like this. If I had just like, I have a, a migraine, but I'm still going to push and you get what I'm saying. So you're being, busy you're getting the task done but you're not being effective you're not showing up with your whole self which is which is important so i've been making time to listen to my body and everything else will adjust from there and you know if if my daughter if she's not hungry it doesn't need to be changed because she's 15 months um but she just wants to be held it's all right for me to you know take a break and do that and i think um it's just important to, I wouldn't necessarily say balance because I don't think we ever find a, a balance, but prioritizing in the moment is something that um, I've learned to do. Yeah.
I love that. Like all of the things that you just said, like you're just speaking my love language and oh. I'm <laughs> like, I love it all. I love it all. Um, and even just like your first sentence, like it's a learning process. It's like mm-hmm. experimentation. It is like throwing spaghetti at the wall, right? It's like yeah. you, you never perfect it. And that it's yeah. like your business name is perfect, like grace, but not That's perfection. That's key because yeah. people are like, you're a time management expert. I'm like, "Mm -mm," because I'm learning every single day. Like I'm just, I'm walking alongside everybody else. I have not figured it out. I don't have the the three keys to living the the most productive life because it varies and you just got to be willing to go with the flow. Yeah. Well, Mm -hmm. then I would say you're a time management expert, honestly. (laughs) I can't escape it, huh? (laughs) You can't escape it. No, I love it. (laughs) So, um, how, how do you like, what is your current mindset around time and around productivity? You know, I I know we've touched on it, but if you could Mm -hmm. make it a little bit more concrete for us. Yeah, I would say that I really focus on what need is, what need, whatever I'm doing is serving. And that's kind of how I base like my priorities, um, especially when it comes to work. Um, So if I, because I'm always having ideas and I think that's just one thing about being a creative, like, you know, you have all of these different ideas and you want to do them all at one time. Um, But I sit and I, sometimes I write it down. Sometimes I just think um, what need is this serving? And is that a need right now? And so right now, for example, I'm doing my business is is more geared towards the design, the web design, the branding and different things, because that's a need. People are moving online. Things are virtual now. People are um, rethinking some of their business strategies and not really sure how to navigate this virtual world if they weren't there before and trying to establish this online presence. So that's a need. While I may have other you know, business ventures and different ideas, that's the need right now. And so I've kind of thrown the target audience thing out the window, which I'm sure like marketers and things are cringing right now. Um, I haven't completely thrown it out the window, but I will say I haven't been as locked down because I think um, it kept me from being as effective as I've seen my business being recently. Um, because I, my business since its, its start last year, January, um, has just shifted according to the need. So for a season, my business was very NICU advocacy related um, because, you know, I, my husband and I spent time with our daughter in the NICU after she was born prematurely. And um, I was looking for ways to advocate and I came out with different NICU products and um, you know, different things like that. And it dealt with time management and self-care and, and things like that. Um, but I wouldn't necessarily say that was my business's target audience forever. And I still do the advocacy and different things, but my business has really shifted according to the need. And I think that's one thing um, that probably makes BGNP so unique because it's not one set, you know, thing. Um, but I have learned to adjust with the need and serve that particular target audience for that season very well. And then when it's time to, you know, shift, you can still have those things available and still interact, but don't be afraid to shift your target audience and to serve a different audience now based on the need, um, because then you're being effective. Because if, if there's no need and you're still serving this particular audience that doesn't have a need, you're being busy. You're getting stuff done. You're putting out products and content, but it's not a need. So you're not being as effective as you could be. Um, So that's one thing thing that has helped me as a business owner, not being so tied to the niche and the target audience, which you hear all the time. Those things are good so that you can craft your content and and things like that. But to where you, you will sacrifice a need just for, you know, relevancy and congruency and, um, symmetry that that doesn't always work and especially now things can just change at any moment so you have to be flexible and I think people appreciate that when you're not so closely tied to a certain look 
of your brand. There are brands now that have had to, they're making hand sanitizer and that has nothing to do <laughs> with, with, their, with their overall brand, but it's about meeting the needs. So I, I think that's a, a more practical example of kind of what BGMP does, um, just meeting the need depending on what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's so important. And, you know, even I, I would consider myself a perfectionist as well, like uh, on that spectrum of things. Um, and so like with the niching and when you're starting your business, it's so easy to get trapped into like getting perfect with your niche and like defining everything. And then you don't get started for like a year later because the whole year you're like worried about your niche and it like doesn't make any sense. Like you find exactly. it action. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah, I love that. Thank you for sharing that. Um, question for you, just because I'm curious. Like, what do you think? I, I think about this all the time. Like, what do you think has caused our culture to um, be in this like hustle mindset and like busy, busy, busy? <sighs> I don't think that's a really hard question because I don't think it was just one thing or even something we can really pinpoint. But I will say just one observation, I probably think it's, it's something that's ingrained in us, I think. Um, first of all, we're very competitive. Like you have that, uh, what is it? Survival of the fittest. Do you remember that? Um, and that has been something that has been forever. So I think it's something that for whatever reason is ingrained in us. Um, it's about survival and it's about competition. And we're trying to now collaborate instead of, you know, compete because we have to come together, you know, during this time. Um, but I do think it's, it's just, I think we all have that inner perfectionist, whether it's go, 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 or maybe just not doing anything because I feel like if I do something, I'm not going to do it perfectly or it's not going to be good enough. So I won't do anything. So like, I think even when it comes to procrastinators, there, is, there still is a side of perfectionism because it's avoiding things because of this, like, I don't know if it's going to be good enough for, um, for some people, not all people. Um, but I think it's just something internal that we just all deal with and we all want to be accounted for and feel like we matter or have, contributed something to the world um because like my husband is always reminding me like you're you're 22 like it's okay if you're not changing the world right, <laughs> right now and like I think we are just so ingrained like with legacy and what are we contributing to the world do we matter um so I think that really drives that hustle and um because it feels good to have someone speak well of you or to get an award or you know do all of these things um so I think it's just something that's that's ingrained yeah I love mm -hmm. that observation for sure and I think that it like it allows grace to even be there right because it's like mm -hmm. you and I are you know I would say recovering perfectionist or whatever you want to yeah. call it but <laughs> it allows like just knowing that it's hundreds of years of like you know mm -hmm. evolution and, and all of that yeah. like that allows space to be like oh it's not totally my fault either I'm not I don't have to blame myself yep. for being and so not attracted to it I'm not alone in it like everybody everybody struggles with it and so yeah. I know one thing with the business and when it was a blog a lot of times you know I, I grew up in church my dad is a pastor um and so grace was strictly limited to a religious setting and grace in terms of like salvation. And so I wanted to present um, grace in a, a light that applies to everyone because it does. And we don't just for, you know, how, you know, my, my faith, you know, we don't just need grace for, for salvation, but we need grace to survive. You know, like we all need to grace ourselves. It's something that is very practical. And I think a lot of times it's like really over spiritualized. And so I wanted to make it something that's very practical. And I've seen like people that aren't, you know, religious or, you know, aren't affiliated with a, with a certain type of faith. They have gravitated because they're like, I need that message. And that's what I want. Like, whether you see a scripture verse, whether you, you know, don't, I, I believe in like really acting it out. 
Um, and I have just seen the, the fruit of that um, just in interacting with everyday people because it's a message we all need. And so yeah. um, just presenting grace that applies to everyone in every context, no matter where you are, um, was really one of the main drives of, of this message. Yeah, I love mm -hmm. that so much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, one last question. Yeah. Where could someone find you if they would love to learn more from you on, you know, web design or any other future business ideas or ventures? Where could they find your um, message and, and how to work with you? Yeah, you can find everything on my website. It's by Grace NP. That stands for not perfection. By Grace NP.com. And everything is there. Links to social media. All of me is on my website, so. <laughs> Beautiful. I love it. One central location. So great. Oh, yeah. <laughs> cool. Do you have any last words of wisdom or anything that you'd like to share with whoever is watching? No, just thank you again for having me on the show. And for everyone listening, whether you take advantage of different services that are offered or not, just remember grace remember that you are human it's okay to um, listen to your body notice your your signals and you know the messages that your body is sending to you and listen to it don't just you know ignore it because you'll pay for it in the long run um, but really take it one day at a time you won't things will come up it's not that you should have known before um, or that even that that should affect a future decision but just live in the moment, take it, take it day by day and just focus on what, what do I need to prioritize right now? Um, have those categories, family, business, like categorize them out, have your, your list of things that you're doing. And if there's one section where you don't have anything, well, maybe I'm, I'm not really embracing that area as much as I should. And then just adjust your to-do list from there. Um, but really focus on the end goal. If you have a to-do list, like, Make sure that you're working towards an, an outcome and not just fulfilling little tasks because that'll make you feel ineffective if you fulfill a little task, but you don't feel like you've progressed with the overall goal. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, love it. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, if you have any questions or anything, feel free to put them in the comments below for me and Kayleon to answer you and interact and, and get to know you better. Um, and we'll see you next time. Thanks.